In this video, I'll be showing you guys how you can make ragdoll effects in Roblox Studio, like the one I'm showing here. And you fall over and you ragdoll. So how do we make this? Ragdolls, like it's in the name, it ragdolls your player. And you can use ragdolls uh, for stuff like when the player dies. Some other games outside of Roblox use this if they're, you know, may not be appropriate. But also games like Big Paintball use ragdolls when a player gets tagged. So how we can do this is we are going to start by putting a script, a server script, in starter character scripts. And I'm just going to call this ragdoll. Alright, now we can start getting our stuff. So since this is in starter character scripts, this script by default will be in the player's character when they join the game. So that means we can get the humanoid right away by saying script.parent wait for child humanoid. Because script.parent will be the character, and then we can get the humanoid just um, uh, right there. Okay, so now we need to get, or we need to set the humanoid's break joints on death equals to false. This makes it, oh, I didn't, I didn't even put it equal. Okay, so we have to equal to this. And then humanoid, by setting this to false, the break joints on death, this makes it so that the joints, you know, when you reset your character, uh, the, the your, your joints like break and stuff, it's going to disable that so we can make our own kind of custom break joint ragdoll system okay so then we're going to say humanoid dot i'm just going to type check this as humanoid just to make to make it easier all right so we're going to say humanoid dot died connect function and this will run when the humanoid uh dies so when the health is set to zero and then we're going to loop through the character's descendants for joints so for underscore comma joint in script dot parent get descendants do and we're going to check if the joint is a motor 6d motor 6d is basically connect two parts together this is how roblox characters connect their body parts together using motor 6ds their joints and if, and if the descendant is a motor 6d then we're going to create a new uh, ball socket constraint and socket dot limits enabled equals to true socket dot twist limits enabled uh twist limits enabled equals to true we are then going to set the parent of the socket to uh the joints parent all right so we've made our ball socket constraint i'll go over what all this does in a second and now we need to create two attachments so let's say attachment one equals to an instance dot new so we're making a new attachment attachment one dot c frame will be equal to joint dot c zero and attachment dot parent will go to joint dot part zero attachment one uh sorry just copy this copy this attachment code put it down here and call this attachment two so uh, a second attachment set the attachments uh things here so we know what we are setting and set this to c1 and set this to part one so we've made a um, ball socket constraint, we've made two attachments, and now we need to set the ball sockets attachments to these attachments, okay? So attachment, or sorry, socket dot attachment zero, we go to attachment one, socket dot attachment one, one. Uh, is equal to attachment two, and then after this we're going to say joint destroy to destroy the joints head inside of your game and if we check inside of my character there is our script ragdoll that we just made so it's already in our character and when I reset my character we have a ragdoll effect and our head is like glitching out and there is kind of a, a, a fix for this. Like when we go, our head like bobbles, it looks really weird. Now there's kind of a fix for this, but uh, you guys don't have to fix it if you don't want to. But it's kind of a fix, it kind of looks weird, but we can try it anyways. So in your script, the alternative, or like the, the, the fix, um, you can put and uh, joint.name 
is not equal to neck and testing this code basically saying we're going to do all this for every joint except for the neck reset um, it kind of makes like the neck makes you look paralyzed it just kind of like is stuck um, so, like every body part is like is ragdolled except for the neck and now it's kind of an alternative but uh, you guys can you like add that if you want to but uh, there's also that head shake in there if you don't uh, if you, if it's just regular ragdoll so I had an example at the beginning of the video from where like I, I uh, touched a kill brick and it like made me fall and stuff so we're gonna do that now so I'm in sort of parts I'm going to make it like kind of big I'm going to anchor it and I'm going to position it in the air I then need to make a kill brick so I'm going to scale this down to one stud, scale it up by one stud, and change it to red. Make the make the color neon, and we have a kill brick at the end here that we can use. And we need to script it now. Okay, so insert a script in the parts, and I'm gonna speed this up for you guys. Okay, so there's our script done, basically our kill brick. And if we position ourselves in our game on top of here, and we uh, touch the red block as we walk across, we fall, and the ragdoll makes us fall over, and there you guys go. Now, let's say we want to have like a little jump um, with our ragdoll. It's so, like when our character uh, is set to zero then we have like a jump and also a ragdoll so how we can do that is by setting the player's humanoid root part assembly linear velocity so script dot parent dot humanoid root parts dot assembly linear velocity vector three dot new and i'm going to set this maybe like 100 and then task dot weights now using this now if we go on, go into the game and use this kill brick again, and we step over it. Oh, maybe there was an error. I didn't do that right. I think I did that right. All right. Well, maybe it's not working here. But if I just reset normally, then it pushes me up in the air with the ragdoll. I don't really know what was going on with it up here, but I thought it would be working. Uh, maybe if we change the force a little bit, uh, my fix. If we change the 200, it might be a little bit extreme. But before, hmm, maybe, I don't know, maybe this is just being weird, uh, but you can add like so, a big jump to it <laughs> when the player ragdolls. And we can also test it, um, so like if we were to set this to 50, let's say we wanted to set it to like 50 on all axes, axes I meant, and it'll like push us and on every axis and like if we reset, it kind of pushes us back in uh, some some different ways. You could randomize this. So I'm pretty sure if we get RNG, random not new over here, and we can say RNG next num maybe integer, we can say negative 50 to 50. And I'm not going to do that for the Y. Or maybe I, I should probably... You can change these values too and set this random number for all of these. Actually, I should probably create a variable for this anyway. So, uh, next, never mind. Okay, that won't work. So, if we set this to all random between negative 50, 50 on all axes, then it'll be uh, random. And we can also change those values too. So, if we reset, then it's, a <laughs> it, it's, uh, it's random to, of how much. Uh, value there is it's random each time of how much it gives you some it's a little bit more uh, it's a little bit less sometimes but uh, it still gives you a little push it, like, it makes you fall over and stuff so you can add that these are just some extra features if you guys want to add that uh, but that's assembly linear velocity if you want to change that and yeah guys that was today's video if you guys did learn something from this video or you guys just like this video please hit the like button and the subscribe button i'll see you guys in the next video
peace.